Hey, in this video, we're going to make a mixer using our quadrature hybrid that we've developed in the last videos uh, and a diode or a couple of diodes. So uh, here I have a, a paper down conversion mixer using quadrature hybrid coupler and Shockey diode for S-band radar application. And the principle is fairly straightforward. We're going to use that branch line or quadrature hybrid coupler that we designed in the last videos. And we're going to pair it with a couple of diodes. And uh, that's shown here. So here's the quadrature hybrid, uh, and it is driving a pair of diodes that have some matching networks associated with them. Uh, and at the common point between the two diodes, we uh, tap off the intermediate frequency uh, and use a filter in order to select that component. All right, so let's go ahead and look at our. Hybrid. Okay, so here's the hybrid coupler we designed last night. And you recall that we have the basic coupler structure and we set it up to be optimized. And if you look at the ending parameters compared to what the beginning parameters uh, were that were based upon the traditional design, you'll see that the uh, ending parameters were pretty close, uh, although the optimization did result in some improvement in performance of the coupler. Now we're going to make a diode mixer. So here's the schematic for the diode mixer. You can see the two diodes uh, here, and then we have some T components that will be used to make connections to the hybrid and also to allow for a matching shunt stub to be uh, included. Uh, you can see that we've parameterized some of the elements on the design. So for instance, uh, we're going to leave uh, W1, which was the 50 ohm width uh, alone, because this is going to pair into the hybrid with the same width. Uh, but we're going to allow an optimization of the shunt stub width and the length of that shunt stub. And we're also going to allow some optimization of uh, the output port, the IF port. That will be done through variable W2. All right, so we have our circuit ready to go and we're gonna run an optimization just to find some optimal widths and lengths for the stubs and transmission line segments. Okay, so for the optimization of that diode mixer, I made a symbol view and I have a test bench here. And you can see I've set up uh, the optimization engine, an S parameter simulation and some goals, uh, just like we've done for past optimizations. Uh, here we're gonna do a random optimization. It's gonna run for 10,000 iterations. Uh, remember this mixer is designed to be uh, operated around uh, three gigahertz. So we're gonna focus our optimization uh, around uh, that three gigahertz point. And our goals are simply going to be to try and minimize S11, S22, and S33. Uh, those are the reflection coefficients at the ports. And so if we're minimizing those reflection coefficients, uh, we will be improving the impedance match. All right, so I'm going to run the optimization engine. It's starting and running, and we'll see what the results are in the end. All right, so the optimization ran, and you can see here that we didn't get uh, ideal results, but we're going to go with them for the time being uh, just to speed along the process. Of course, we could add a more complicated matching network to try and improve those uh, impedance matches, uh, or we could use quarter wave transformers or something along those lines. Uh, here you can see our return loss is, uh, at uh, S11 and S22 is, a, is just a, about minus 3 dB, uh, which, uh, again, we're looking for more like minus 10. It's not great. We're a little bit better at the IF port. And uh, we'll see uh, what the results yield. Now, we're going to uh, open up a design guide for the mixer. So uh, if you go, uh, you know, open up a schematic, we'll just open up a generic schematic and then go to design guide, mixers. We're going to do this single ended mixer characterization, conversion gain, gain comp versus input power. Uh, we'll go ahead and click that and open up the design guide. Now, if you've opened up the design guide uh, correctly, uh, you should get uh, uh, this particular schematic. Uh, now, in this case, we're designing a mixer around 3 gigahertz with an IF of 100 megahertz. So here I've set the RF frequency to 3 gigahertz, the LO frequency to uh, 2.9 gigahertz. 
I've set the LO power to 15, the load impedance to 50, uh, and we're going to sweep the uh, input, the RF input power uh, across the range. And everything should be set. Now, if we descend into this mixer component, your mixer is going to have, uh, it, it, initially there will be some transistors in here. Uh, I've replaced those transistors uh, with a mixer. Let's go ahead and fix the schematic up real quick. Okay, so you'll see what I've done here on this schematic is I've taken uh, the, uh, oops, I've mixed this up. I want to put the RF port into the input of the coupler, the LO port into the isolation port of the coupler. The through port goes into our RF in for the diode mixer. The coupled port goes into the LO in for the diode mixer. And the IF out port is going to go into a filter. Now, how did we design this filter? Marquee Microwaves has an excellent filter calculator uh, that we can use. We're going to design a low pass filter. Uh, I'm going to use a Chebyshev response, which is an equal ripple response. Uh, fifth order, that means it'll have five inductive and capacitive components. Uh, I'm doing a shunt first. Of course, you can uh, change this topology uh, as you wish. A cutoff frequency of 120 megahertz, a passband ripple of 0.1 dBs. And I want it to be 50 ohms at the input and output. And you can compute this filter. It'll show you what the frequency response and phase response uh, look like. Or, sorry, the, uh, the uh, frequency response uh, of the uh, uh, S21 looks like and uh, S11 uh, looks like. All right, we can take these components and bring them back into ADS. And you can see I've already done that here. So here's my fifth order Chevy Chev filter. And this is going to be driving a decoupling cap of fifth of uh or a blocking cap of 1000 picofarads all right so we can go back up to the top and we can look in under the hood in the harmonic balance engine you can see that we have our LO frequency we're going to be simulating up to the 11th harmonic uh this uh, just ensures uh, that we uh, get a nice good drive uh and uh and account for all the mixing spurs and things like that that might uh that might fall out uh we're going to be simulating to the third harmonic of our RF frequency and our maximum mixing order will be 10 in this case. We're going to be sweeping the RF input power, and this is going to be done according to a sweep plan that's set up down here. Most everything else is going to be left alone here. The only thing that we typically mess with uh, might be the solver. So here you can see that the convergence mode is going to be the uh, the fast convergence mode uh, with a maximum number of iterations of 10, and they're using the direct solver. These are things that might have been changed from the default. All right, so everything should be set to go. Let's go ahead and run our simulation. And we will get some results. Okay, so you can see uh, that our uh, mixer can be used for up conversion or down conversion. Uh, in our case, uh, we have a low pass filter, so we're only trying to use it for as a down conversion mixer, uh, just to uh, pick off that 100 megahertz uh, IF component. Uh, and let's uh, let's just look to see what's happened here. So if we zoom in, in the down conversion mode, you can see our conversion gain is about minus 18 dBs. It's not too bad. We can uh, we can probably uh, improve this uh, a bit. Uh, by uh, either increasing the RF power uh, or we can try and improve the matching just a little bit. Uh, you can see that the output frequency is 100 megahertz uh, and uh, we can look to see uh, what the conversion gain was uh, for up conversion. So this would be uh, at uh, 5.9 gigahertz, the sum of 3 gigahertz and 2.9 gigahertz. And you can indeed see that uh, we have a lot less power here, uh, more like minus 150 dB. Uh, so indeed we are uh, generating uh, a down conversion mixer. Uh, now, this simulation only accounts for uh, conversion gain. It doesn't look at things uh, like uh, minimizing LO feed through, isolation between the ports, uh, things like that. If you look at other design guides, you'll see uh, that other design guides have a bit more advanced setup. Uh, but for the time being, uh, this one uh, is giving us uh, results that we like. We do have conversion gain at 100 megahertz, or, or at least we're converting a signal from 
uh, 3 gigahertz uh, down to 100 megahertz, which is what we want to do, not converting it to 5.9 gigahertz. All right, so we're going to stop there. Uh, and uh, in the next video, we'll look at running a few more advanced mixer simulations. Uh, but in, in, indeed, uh, in this case, we have generated a mixer, which was the goal of this video.